the Zenfone Max Pro M1 is a great phone. But you can have the ROM on your Redmi Note 5 Pro right now. So why would you need it? You may ask, but the thing is, MIUI is bloaty and it is a lot heavier on the like phone and you have to like say that MIUI has kind of a lot of ads and it really sucks. So if you want a pure stock Android based ROM which has a little bit of features and that is mostly like mostly stable, so I would definitely recommend you using this ROM. The Zenfone Max Pro M1's ROM on the Redmi Note 5 Pro, you can have it right now and I'm running it super fine, I do not have any complaints but today in this video, I'm gonna talk about every little things about this ROM. So without further ado, let's begin the video on the Zenfone Max Pro M1's ROM on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. Now talking about nifty little things, I'll talk about the bad things and good things all together and let's start it from here. Well, the haptic feedback in this ROM. It definitely feels that this is a ported ROM only on this aspect, the haptic feedback. Well, whenever you tap, whenever you want to unlock the screen with the fingerprint scanner or even like if you want to like press any home button or any kind of buttons over here, it's definitely gonna suck because it's like a too much vibration stuff. It even vibrates two times the phone. I, I definitely can't explain or like can't show this but it's really annoying when it vibrates that much for just a haptic feedback. So that's a bit of con and you can't really adjust it as of now. So this is how the home screen itself looks like. And here we have some like more stuff. And this is the stock camera of the Zenfone Max Pro M1's ROM. And here you will see like the settings and stuff for this camera UI. And this is the Snapdragon camera I guess and it is working fine. And it does take like quite decent pictures if not like too good pictures and even you can see the front camera does work so you can see my face from here and I can click a selfie let me just do that so I just clicked a selfie and it does work fine you don't need to worry as you can see it takes decent pictures if not so good so that's how it is the stock camera is there and over here you do get camera to api like pre-installed in this rom and let me just show you that i installed the pixel 3 camera and as you can see it is working super fine and you get the normal like stuff like the portrait mode and stuff this is the latest like google camera i can find over like in that website i'll link it below if you want this pixel 3 camera and let me show you the display settings from here here you will get normal the brightness level the night light it is working fine by the way the night light and we even have the auto brightness or adaptive brightness. We have the smart screen on, does not work. And the sleep timer is up to 30 minutes over here. And we have the blink light and screen color option just freezes. So that's how it is. Let's go back inside sound settings. And here we get some like more interesting stuff. We have the system sounds like dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound touch sounds and the vibration on tap this is the haptic feedback and i turned it off because of that issue harsh vibrate or the haptic feedback option so that's how it is and you can change the ringtones and stuff from here and we have the normal like the volume panel over here of android 8.1 and it is pretty simplistic so no issues regarding that now let's talk about one good thing about this rom is the calculator features well here as you can see we have this MIUI calculator and it is pretty useful because it, it can get you like lot of stuff right. So I definitely use it but you can't use this app in Android Pie. And over here we have the Zenfone Maxis calculator and here as you can see this is how it looks like and now over here one thing I really really like is there is the unit converter and currency converter as well built in in this app so that is pretty cool. And even if you tap on these three dots and go to the settings, you can enable multiple stuff like you can like switch to this like dark calculator. And if you go back, as you can see, it changed to dark. Looks pretty cool. And you can even change these like circular buttons to like square buttons. Let me just do this to rectangle. And as you can see, it changed to rectangle. So that is pretty cool. And one more like interesting thing about this calculator. Let me show you the widgets. And here you get one like full widget of this calculator. As you can see, if you are someone who is really into the calculators and stuff, 
you can just like switch to this home screen and calculate whatever you want so that is pretty cool in my opinion and let me know if that like if this thing helped you in the comments down below and by the way i have to talk about the google pay in this rom well the google pay actually was not working by default like i tried to set up it showed that the device is rooted and stuff like that so all i had to do is to just go to the settings then apps just find this google play services app then go to it then permission then just just disable this phone and sms app permission from here and tap on deny anyway so once this phone and sms app permission disabled from the play services just open up google pay and just set it up it should work fine you don't need to worry now we even have the fm radio and stuff present over here so you don't need to worry but the phone and sms app is straight from like the google dialer or the google contacts over here it looks like it's from android pi but it is working super fine and sadly it does not have any call recording buttons or stuff but it like the vaulty calls does work super fine you don't need to worry at all and of course we have the vaulty logo up top and it is pretty big and frankly speaking the home screen does look pretty cool as stock androidish as you may want it to be but the thing is the status bar feels a lot crowded in my opinion because there you have the time, the battery, the battery percentage, the network, the Vaulty logo, the Wi-Fi logo, the Do Not Disturb logo, then there is the location stuff and it feels a lot more crowded to me at least. So let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this but that's how I feel. I think Asus may need to change it in the future because it, it is really a lot like heavier there are features like you can draw w or c to launch camera or any other app but that feature is simply not working on the redmi note 5 pro yes i did try it multiple times with multiple ways but for me at least it does not work but there are good features that is working is the double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen so as you can see and even double tap to wake is working fine too and let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed quickly So as you can see the fingerprint scanner is pretty fast and it is working fairly good but the thing is if you tap on the fingerprint scanner like when the screen is on it's gonna like work as some kind of a touch gesture so as you can see I'm touching the fingerprint scanner right now I don't know if you can see it as you can see it's it's it works a little bit like differently and it toggles some apps or like it works as a touch gesture so that's how it is so make sure whenever your phone is unlocked you don't touch the fingerprint scanner in this rom i don't know if you can turn it off or not but yeah that's how it is now let me quickly show you the about section and other stuff of this rom so right now let me show you the settings let's go to the settings and system and then over here let's go to about and here you will see we have the android version as android 8.1.0 audio so that's how it is and the security patch level over here is of November 1st, 2018. So, and the kernel version is Ancient Kernel by default, like the stock kernel is Ancient Kernel. And this is the 3rd January 2019 build, by the way. And this is a port by Guzram. And I have to say, this is like one amazing ROM. And of course, the system updates and stuff not gonna work. This is a ported ROM, don't expect those things and over here let me show you the gestures well here you will find the zen motion and from here you get the double tap to turn off screen double tap to wake up swipe up to wake up and stuff i don't know what it does but it does not work kind of now let me show you the app open up speeds and the ram management of this rom and even the app open up animations and stuff now let me open up some apps and show you guys the app open up speeds let's open chrome now open file explorer Let's open the Facebook app and now Twitter and Play Store and the YouTube app, of course. So now let's open Instagram. So let me just reopen the apps from memory. So as you can see, the app open up animations are pretty cool, looks pretty sweet. And I do not have any complaints regarding the app open up animations and stuff but i have to say this is pretty smooth and it does feel like almost a stock android based like 
This ROM is made for this device, which is actually not the case. This is a ported ROM. So it definitely does not feel like that and it is really sweet. And you can switch between apps quickly just by double tapping on the recent button. So that is pretty cool. So as you can see and even like you can scroll and go to any like app you want. So this is pretty smooth. I have to say the experience over here is pretty smooth. I do not have any kind of complaints regarding the performance of this ROM. Now if you are someone who wants face unlock, well let me show you. Now let me set up face unlock and show you guys if the face unlock works fine. Inside security, you will find this face recognition option. Just tap on it and it will show you register your face. Next. So it says 100% complete, unlock device, turn on. So it's set to unlock device, let me just try it now. Yeah, it works. So yeah, it's pretty fast. I don't know if you can see it, but it is pretty fast. Let me just try it on the home screen. Let's just put the phone in, in other direction and switch to this. And as you can see, it unlocks pretty fast. I do not have any complaints regarding the face unlock at all. So it is pretty fast and snappy and it is pretty usable. And let me show you the home button animation right now. And as you can see, this has the stock Android like navigation panel and it is like looking pretty dope in my opinion. Even MIUI has it, but MIUI I guess does not have this kind of like home button animation like stock Android, these four colors or whenever you launch your Google Assistant, it just like does this kind of animation. I think MIUI has that with the like the assistant launching but normally it does not but over here even if you tap the home button once it's gonna do the animation. Looks pretty dope. Now let me show you one more thing is the YouTube kind of animation. I don't know if it's like specialized for this ROM but I have not seen it in MIUI and it is looking pretty dope. I have seen it in OnePlus devices with the YouTube app. Like whenever you rotate, like whenever you are playing a video and rotate the screen or you just switch to full screen or just like you just f switch the phone from vertical to like the horizontal mode, maybe you can call it that way. And whenever you do that, it's like some kind of a zoom in animation. So that looks pretty cool in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this, but it is pretty cool in my opinion. Now one good thing about this ROM is sound output via the headphone jack is pretty good. I do not have any kind of complaints and I feel the sound is pretty good even though it does not have any equalizer. I mean the ROM does not have any equalizer or the audio effects kind of things but the sound output is pretty good. And this is how the lock screen looks like. The clock shows as pretty big font and here I have the face unlock turned on so it shows the face. And here is the like the voice search and to the right button we get the camera stuff. So and we have the status bar and it shows the network name and stuff over here in the lock screen. Let me just unlock the screen and if you want to flash this ROM well I have to say this is like one simple method and let me show you the file's name. So I hope you can see it now. This is the file name of this ROM x00td kind of and this is the 3rd january 2019 build and this rom does have the g apps included and the size you can see it's around 1.77 gb and it has the g apps included so you don't need to flash like g apps separately on this rom so that is a pretty cool thing you just like boot into your twrp wipe cache dalvik system data no matter whichever rom you're coming from and just flash the ROM and reboot to system and that's how simple it is. Now talking about the battery life, well it is too early for me to comment on the battery life but I would say it is pretty decent. It can definitely give you around 7 hours of screen on time depending on your usage and even gaming performance and stuff is super fine. I do not have any kind of complaints regarding like playing PUBG and stuff on this ROM. And the battery is definitely gonna last you a full working day, you do not need to worry at all. So that is pretty much it, that is all I had to say about this ROM guys. Thank you so much for watching, give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends if you want to like show them up that the Redmi Note 5 Pro has everything, the Samsung UI, the Zenfone Max Pro M1 UI, so you can just like do anything with your Redmi Note 5 Pro. So. 
that is pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now